Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my channel. So on this video, I'm going to be covering acid-base imbalance. It's a lot to cover. I'm taking my kid to soccer soon, so I doubt I'm going to get through the whole thing, but this is going to be the first part if I don't get through it all, which I don't think I will, but this is a great start. So I'm going to be covering acid-base imbalance. Before we even start, guys, I'm asking you, please support this channel by liking this video. I know you haven't even watched this video yet, and I'm asking you like it. Yes, press the like button. If you hate the video, let me know in the comments, but support me. Check that like button. Make sure you press that red note notification button so you'll know every time a new video is released. So let's start with the difference between respiratory um, acidosis versus respiratory um, alkalosis. So first things first, whenever you're thinking about respiratory, I want you to think about CO2. Either the CO2 is going to be high or it's low. OK, when we're talking about respiratory, because what happens is, guys, when your breathing slows down and you're really not breathing out, you're not getting rid of your carbon dioxide. Guess what? Carbon dioxide is acidic. You can call it carbon diacid in order to remember that it's acidic. So if you're not breathing out that carbon dioxide or that carbon diacid because it's very acidic, you're holding on to all that acid. And that can turn you into what? Respiratory acidosis because you're holding on to all that acid versus when you're freaking out and you start hyperventilating and you're going like <laughs> and you're blowing off all that acid that can throw you into what? respiratory alkalosis because you don't have enough of that acid in your body because you're blowing it off. So the more acidic you are, the more of the CO2 you're holding on to, and the more alkalinic you are, the more of the CO2. Sorry about that, guys. Um, let me start over again. So the more acidic you are, that's the more CO2 that you're holding on to. That's what makes the acid high. But the more alkalinic, you're blowing off the CO2 and you don't have as much in your body. And that that's what throws you to, towards alkalosis. And the name of the game, guys, is homeostasis. Homeostasis means balance. You always want an equal balance, all right? So when your CO2 is too high, you're holding on to it you're acidic. And when your CO2 is too low, you're getting rid of it too much. You're alkalinic as far as respiratory is concerned. So with that being said, let's get starting. started. Respiratory acidosis. So it says here, I'm right here where it's highlighted right here. Okay. It says respiratory acidosis, carbonic acid excess. That lets us know carbonic. Okay, guys, we're talking about CO2. Acid excess, this occurs whenever the person hypoventilates. Why? When you're hypoventilating, you're not breathing out a lot. You're holding it all in, which means you're holding what in? The CO2 that increases your acid level. Look at what it says here. It says hypoventilation leads to buildup of carbon dioxide. You know, I can't speak, guys. Carbon dioxide resulting in accumulation of carbonic acid in the blood. Remember, your breathing is supposed to be 12 to 22 or 12 to 24, depending on the book that you're using. But when it drops lower than 12, you're hypoventilating, you're holding on to all that acid, okay? And that throws you closer to respiratory acidosis. Now let's look at the opposite. I'm right over here. Is my light on? Yeah, it is. Um, where it says respiratory alkalosis. Respiratory alkalosis, this is carbonic acid deficit, not having enough of that CO2. This occurs with hyperventilation. When you're doing this and you're breathing off all of that CO2, okay? That occurs with hyperventilation or an increase in respiratory rate or volume. Because guess what? When your respiratory rate or volume increases, you're getting rid of that CO2. Now, this table that you're looking at, we're going to come back to this. I want to keep going, but I'll come back to this, okay? Because you do need to know that. Let's jump down to where it says metabolic acidosis and metabolic alkalosis. So we were just talking about respiratory. We were talking about lungs. We were talking about CO2. Now we're jumping to metabolic. What, just like I told you, when you hear respiratory, I want you to think of CO2. I want you to think of the lungs because that's what we're dealing with. When you think of metabolic, I want you to think of the kidneys. 
because the kidneys are responsible for the bicarb, the HCO3, okay? Let's look at what this says. Metabolic acidosis, this is base carbon, carbonate deficit. This occurs when another acid other than carbonic acid accumulates in the body or when the bicarb is lost in fluids. So let, just to, you know, these are a lot of words just to say, a patient's in metabolic um, acidosis when they don't have enough bicarb. Bicarb is the HCO3. So when that bicarb is too low, that places the patient in metabolic acidosis. Let's keep going. Look at what it says here. Keto acid accumulation and diabetic ketoacidosis and lactic acid accumulation with shock are examples. And guys, that example that just, they just gave you right here, I put a star next to it because that's the same example they give you on NCLEX that they expect you to know. Don't say I didn't warn you. Let's keep going. The patient often develops Kussmaul's respirations. That's on NCLEX as well. What are Kussmaul's respirations? Those are the deep, rapid breathing, okay? So in metabolic acidosis, patient does not have enough bicarb. They got too much what? Acid. So what happens, guys? The patient's trying to, gonna be trying to get um, um, rid of all that acid that they're going through. Now let's jump to metabolic alkalosis. I don't know if I told you that or not, but the Kussmaul's respirations for the metabolic acidosis and Clex expects you to know that as well. Let's talk about metabolic alkalosis. This is the opposite guys. This is when we have too much what? Bicarb, HCO3. Remember when we're talking about metabolic, we're talking about bicarb. We're talking about the kidneys. Don't, don't switch it up. Respiratory is lungs, CO2. Metabolic is kidneys, bicarb, HCO3, okay? So anyway, metabolic alkalosis, this is based on bicarb excess, having way too much bicarb, that's your HCO3, and occurs when a loss of acid, either from prolonged vomiting or gastric suction or gain in bicarb, such as ingestion of baking soda. That is important for you guys to know. The example that they gave about the vomiting or gastric suction, that's been seen on NCLEX as well. So you have to understand this, con uh, this concept. So a patient has metabolic alkalosis, too much bicarb, not enough um, H, um, uh, acid. What could have happened? Let's look at this. Let's start with the vomiting. You're throwing up, you're throwing up, you're throwing up. You're throwing what? Your gastric, co your gastric contents. Okay, fair enough. What is your gastric contents? Food, but what breaks down the food? Your hydrochloric acid. So all of that vomiting, you're getting rid of all the acid in your body. That'll throw you in a metabolic alkalosis state or gastric suction. You're getting suction in your stomach. Guess what's getting suction? The hydrochloric acid. All of the acid is leaving the body, throwing the body into what? alkalotic state. The name of the game is homeostasis, guys. You don't want to be too acidic and you don't want to be too alkalinic. So the more of your acids that you get rid of, it's like a seesaw. The more acid that you get rid of, the more the patient's going to go into an alkalinic state and vice versa. I made a note up here. My handwriting is crazy, but it says no HCL. And what I meant by that is no hydrochloric acid. Your acid is being removed by the body by vomiting or by suction. And that's what'll throw the patient into an alkalinic state. And those are classic examples that you'll see on NCLEX. Look what it says here, the respiratory rate decreases in order to increase plasma carbon dioxide. Let's stop right there because you have to understand that compensatory mechanism. So here I am, I'm in metabolic alkalosis. I've got too much bicarb, not enough CO2. Okay, I'm in metabolic alkalosis, which means metabolic. Are we talking about the lungs or the kidneys? We're talking about the kidneys. So if I'm in metabolic alkalosis, I got too much bicarb. I don't have enough um, um, carbon dioxide. My What's in trouble? My kidneys. What's the only other organ that can help? The lungs. So, and just follow me here, guys. So if my kidneys are in trouble, I got too much bicarb, not enough acid, there's only two things my lungs can do. It can increase breathing or slow down breathing. That's it. 
That is absolutely it. So I want you to think about it. I got too much bicarb. The lungs can increase or decrease breathing. What do you think the lungs are going to do if I have too much bicarb? The lungs are going to slow down breathing. Why? When you slow down breathing, you're holding on to what? Your carbon dioxide, which is what? Acidic. Remember, right now, I'm in an alkalinic state. I have way too much bicarb and not enough acid. So when the lungs try to help, it slows down the breathing to increase that CO2 that helps decrease the bicarb to bring it to homeostasis. It makes sense. Just like, and I'm going to go back to this example. It's going to make more sense to you guys. I'm going to go back down here. right here. For metabolic acidosis, we're still talking about the kidneys. The kidneys are in trouble, except now the kidneys have a little bit of bicarb and too much CO2 is going on, right? When the kidneys are in trouble, who's the only one that can help? The lungs. There's only th two things the lungs can do, increase breathing or decrease breathing. So if the kidneys are in trouble, Kidneys do not have enough bicarb. There's way too much CO2 going on. What do you think the lungs are going to do? The lungs are going to increase breathing. <sighs> Make you blow off that CO2 because right now the kidneys have way too much CO2 and a little bit of bicarb. The, the lungs, the uh, kidneys have way too much CO2 and a little um, bit of bicarb. So by increased breathing, <sighs> And I get rid of my CO2, it brings me from an acidic to a more alkalinic state. That's the name of the game, guys. And the same thing happens for respiratory. If a patient's going through respiratory acidosis, they've got way too much acid, which is a carbon dioxide. Yes, those lungs are going to try to help. They're going to start breathing off CO2 to get rid of that CO2 if they got too much uh acid, but guess what the kidneys are going to try to do to help? Shoot out more bicarb to make it equalized. Whenever the lungs are in trouble, kidneys try to help. Whenever the kidneys are in trouble, the lungs try to help. And that's what's known as compensation. Okay. Okay. Now let's go back to that table. I promised I was going to show you. Respiratory acidosis, respiratory alkalosis, metabolic acidosis, metabolic um, acidosis and alkalosis. So let's start from here. Make this a little bit bigger for you. How do I make this bigger? I don't think that's it. Let me try. Oh, okay, that's it. Great. All right. So respiratory acidosis. Respiratory, we're talking about the lungs. We're talking about CO2, right? acidosis. So is the CO2 too high or too low? Too high. Because when you think of carbon dioxide, you're thinking of acidosis. So too much carbon dioxide. Look at the pathophysiology. Increased CO2 retention. Patients holding on to way too much CO2. And that can happen from hypoventilation. If you're not um, breathing adequately, your breasts aren't um, from that 12 to 20, it's less than 12, you're holding on to that CO2 that will cause the CO2 to accumulate, okay? Could be from a compensatory response that's increased in bicarb retention. Uh, excuse me, let me go back and read it. Says compensatory, oh, excuse me, compensatory response is increased bicarb retention by the kidneys. Remember, when the lungs are in trouble, the kidneys try to help. When the kidneys are in trouble, the lungs try to help. So in this situation, in respiratory acidosis, the lungs are in trouble. There are way too much CO2, so the kidneys try to help. How do the kidneys try to help? Another word for saying help is what? Compensatory or to compensate. How do the kidneys try to compensate? Look at this, guys. Compensatory response is increased bicarb retention. The, the, the uh, kidneys start shooting out way more bicarb and makes you hold on to the bicarb to even it out. Because right now the patient's in an acidic state and we need to balance that acidic state with what? Bicarb. It makes sense. Now let's look at the other end of the spectrum. Respiratory alkalosis. 
So we're still talking about the lungs. The lungs are in trouble. But instead of having too much CO2, there's not enough. The CO2 is too low. By the way, guys, CO2 is 35 to 45. You need to know that. If it's uh, CO2 is less than 35, you're in alkalinic state. And if it's more than 45, you're in an acidic state. You need to know that, guys. You have to memorize those numbers. All right, but moving on. Respiratory alkalosis. So we're still talking about the lungs. The lungs are in trouble, but the lungs are in an alkalinic state, which means there's not enough CO2. That CO2 is less than 35. Look at the pathophysiology. Increased CO2 what? Excretion. That means to get rid of. The patient's getting rid of way too much CO2. That's why the patient's in an alkalinic state and they don't have enough CO2. Okay? Be very careful with these words, guys, because as students, many of you, what you do is you see increased CO2 and you bypass that word excretion. That word excretion and that word ret retention completely changes the sentence. Read the entire sentence to make sure you get that answer right. In respiratory alkalosis, there is an increased CO2 what? Excretion to get rid of. So it doesn't mean the CO2 is increased in respiratory alkalosis because it's not. The excretion getting rid of the CO2, that is what's increased. And it can come from what? Hyperventilation. <laughs> Blowing off all that CO2 can throw you into an alkalinic state. So remember I told you when the lungs are in trouble, kidneys try to help. When the kidneys are in trouble, the lungs try to help. So when the patient's in respiratory alkalosis, how do the kidneys try to compensate? Take a look. Compensatory response is increased by carb excretion. So here we are, the patient does not have enough CO2. They're in an alkalinic state. And the only guy that can help are the kidneys. There's only two things the kidneys can do. Shoot out bicarb or hold on to bicarb. Patient's already in an alkalinic state. So what's it going to do? Get rid of bicarb to help even it out. The name of the game, guys, is homeostasis. Opposites. Let's look at metabolic. Remember, when I told you metabolic, you're thinking about the kidneys, you're thinking about bicarb metabolic acidosis. So now the kidneys are in trouble. The kidneys are in trouble and there is not enough bicarb. This patient is in the what? Acidic state. Look at the pathophysiology. Gain of fixed acid, they're in acidic state. Inability to excrete acid, they're unable to get rid of all the acid that they have or loss of base. Maybe they just lost all of their base and that threw them into an acidic state. Regardless of the reason, the kidney's in trouble because of one of those reasons, right? So what's the compensatory mechanism? Remember, if the kidney's in trouble, who tries to help? The lungs. Look at what ha happens. Compensatory response is increased CO2 excretion. So the kidneys are in trouble because the bicarb is too low or the CO2 is too high, or it could be a combination of both. The only guy that can help is the lungs. So what do the lungs do? The lungs get rid of the CO2 because remember CO2 is acidic. So the patient starts doing this, <laughs> blowing off that CO2 to throw them from acidic state to more alkalinic state, homeostasis. That's what we're trying to get to, balance. And metabolic alkalosis. Kidneys are in trouble, but this time it's the opposite. Um, kidneys got way too much bicarb going on and not enough CO2. Look at the patho, loss of acid or gain of base, what I just said to you. So how does the body tr try to compensate? When the kidneys are in trouble, who's the only organ that can help the lungs? So if the kidneys got way too much bicarb, HCO3, base going on, what are the lungs gonna do? <coughs> Excuse me. Look at this, Compensato compensatory response is increased CO2 <gasps> retention holding on to that CO2, because look at this, the patient's in a metabolic alkalinic state. We need more CO2. So what do the lungs do? Slow down breathing so you can hold on to the CO2 so that your acid levels go up. Guys, you, <coughs> excuse me, you make acid balance and compensation so much harder than it really is. I promise. This is it. 
Well, it's almost it because in part two, I want to show you how to figure out the difference in metabolic versus, versus um, um, respiratory acidosis versus alkalosis when they actually give you numbers. It's very easy. I promise you guys you'll get it in five minutes. But I'm taking my kid to soccer soon and I'm pushing it for you guys. Something I didn't go over, the causes. I'm going to go over that real quick. And then I got to go. Part two will continue and I'll make sure I include um, the, the acid base, the numbers with the pH, the bicarb, the um, um, CO2, and how to figure out what state the patient's in. But anyway, let's come back to respiratory acidosis. We're talking about the lungs. Way too much what? CO2. What could be some causes? I'm not going to go through all of these guys, but I'm going to go through some. COPD. Patient with COPD, they're holding on to what? CO2. They're going to be walking around in chronic acidic state. Patients who take barbiturates or sedatives, overdose. Think about it. Barbiturates and sedatives, they slow everything down, including the breathing. Your breathing slows down. You hold on to CO2. Your CO2 goes up. It makes sense, guys. This is a rocket science. You guys know this. You just have a hard time putting it together. I don't know why, but guess what? Not going to happen anymore. Adelectasis. Collapse of the alveoli. So the patient's not breathing the way they're supposed to. They're holding on to the CO2, which causes an increase in the acid levels. Now let's go to respiratory alkalosis. The lungs are in trouble, but this time it's the opposite. The um, CO2 is too low. Patient's got too much bicarb going on. What can happen? What can cause this, I should say, hyperventilation? <laughs> They're doing all of this, blowing off all of their CO2. That can throw them into respiratory alkalosis. Matter of fact, I should put a star next to the ones that show up on um, NCLEX the most. I'll put a, I'm putting a star next to the ones. Guys, I don't write this test. I do not write NCLEX, so you better know everything. Don't come back and say, oh, Professor D, you told me this is going to be it. No, I'm just telling you historically what I've seen to show up, but I don't write this exam. All right, respiratory alkalosis, um, not enough CO2, way too much bicarb, lungs are in trouble. What can cause it? Definitely hyperventilation. Liver failure, mechanical hyperventilation. Actually, liver, liver failure, this is very true. Um, that is a possible cause of respiratory alkalosis. But I really haven't seen it on NCLEX. I don't know why I put a star next to it, but know it anyway. I don't write that test. All right, next, metabolic acidosis. So now we're talking about the kidneys. Kidneys in too much trouble, too much acids going on. What can cause that? Diabetic, keto acidosis. Definitely lactic acidosis, all of these. Matter of fact, the, this on NCLEX is often a select all that applies for metabolic acidosis. You better know them causes. And then metabolic alkalosis, kidneys are in trouble, but opposite. There is um, not enough CO2, bicarbs way too high. What can cause that? Vomiting. You're getting rid of your hydrochloric acid in your stomach. That can throw you to an alkalotic state. NG suction. I didn't I tell you earlier, this is on NCLEX. I promise it's been seen many, many times. Diuretic therapy, because through the urine, you can lose your base, your bicarb. Absolutely hypokalemia. Um, mineral corticoid uh, use. So you guys take a look at this. When I come back or not when I come back, because when I come home tonight, I'm going to bed. But on the next video, I will make a part two. Matthew! How much you guys want to bet? He's not even ready to go. On the next video, I'm going to make a part two where... Um, we go over some levels and some numbers.
guys, I know this was a short video. I hope it was helpful for what it was. Please, in the comments, let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know what you'd like to see more of. Please do not forget to, let me tell you guys something. You guys see, I'm posting a lot more because something I noticed, you guys have been asking for more and more lectures and I really didn't want to do any lectures, but I'm getting a million sob stories. You guys make me feel bad. I started doing lectures. I'm not asking for not a penny from you guys. I'm just asking for support. Like the video, share once in a while, right? Even if you don't like this video, please still like it and let me know in the comment section I suck, but still help support this channel for the students who do appreciate what I'm doing. All right, guys, um, don't forget to like, subscribe. Don't forget on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. I'm on Twitter now, but I'm still learning how to use it. So I haven't posted anything yet, but I'm on Twitter as well. So next video, I'm going to continue with acid-base balance. Thank you so much for um, joining me uh, for this video and you'll see me on the next video.